on January 1st, 1945. The Allied Air Forces welcomed the New Year with an unexpected low-level attack from the Luftwaffe. Named Operation Baseplate, or Operation Bodenplatte, the German attack launched 850 fighters and bombers against 17 Allied airfields in Belgium, the Netherlands, and France. The goal of Baseplate was to achieve air superiority by taking advantage of sleeping and hungover Allied soldiers. The fighters sought to destroy or critically damage as many runways, hangars, and aircraft as possible. The operation was initially planned for mid-December 1944, but bad weather delayed it several times until January 1st, 1945. Secrecy for Operation Baseplate was so tight that not all German officers were informed of the plan. This terrible mismanagement ultimately led to one of the most remarkable self-inflicted blunders of World War II, when the Germans mistakenly shot down fighters from over 25% of their own air units. Of the event, General de Jagdflieger Adolf Galland would say, quote, We sacrificed our last substance. Throughout 1944, the German air forces had grown increasingly desperate. After five years of war, they had lost most of their skilled pilots and ran out of safe areas to train their new recruits. The British had also begun building the Spitfire Mark IX, the first Allied plane with superiority over the German Focke-Wulf FW-190. By the end of the year, inadequately trained pilots with zero testing experience were drilling the Luftwaffe ranks. It was the beginning of the end, and Luftwaffe knew it. Commander-in-Chief Hermann Göring assigned General Major Diedrich Peltz as the leader of Operation Bodenplatte. In English, Bodenplatte translates to base plate or floorboard. The Germans wanted to penetrate the Allies' Air Force's foundation to destroy their growing base of power in Europe. General Major Peltz assigned almost a thousand German aircraft to attack Allied airfields in the Low Countries. Belgium, the Netherlands, and France. The Messerschmitt Bf 109, which was considered the most popular and feared aircraft in history, would be used for the mission, along with the dreaded Focke-Wulf FW-190A and 190D. Initially, Operation Baseplate was supposed to be executed in early December, in support of Hitler's Battle of the Bulge. However, bad weather kept postponing it. On the few days with clear skies, the airspace was taken by Allied fighters. By New Year's Eve, the Luftwaffe had lost more than 600 aircraft and 350 pilots. Operation Baseplate had to be executed before they lost any more. General Major Peltz knew a surprise attack on New Year's Day was their only chance at victory. This type of operation called for strict radio silence and secrecy to surprise the Allied forces on the ground. At night, Peltz coded a go signal to fighter bases across northern Germany. The great blow was scheduled for the next morning. On the first morning of 1945, at around 9.20 a.m., an ominous roar echoed over the Low Countries. The Allies had been launching massive plane raids for years, but for the first time in some time, these were heading towards them. A thousand German fighters crossed the lines at only 150 feet off the ground. It was a surprise attack that caught the British and Americans off guard. Allied intelligence failed to detect the German operation. In recovered ultra-decrypted transcripts, there are only rare indications of what was happening on the other side of the front. On December 4th, 1944, Ultra-Intelligence noticed that the Germans had ordered stockpiling for navigational aids, like flares and smoke bombs. But the Allies made no written observations of this information. Allied Intelligence concluded that the stockpiling was for a ground support mission, not an interception operation. This was reasonable, but no indications of possible ground targets were given. Airman Desmond Shepard was an armorer stationed in the Netherlands during the attack. He recalled, quote, 
The first hours of 1945 were spent letting in the new year, wishing each other all the best and having a few beers. After breakfast, I was crossing the runway, going toward the armory. At that moment, I heard gunfire. Looking up the runway, I saw what looked like an ME-262 jet go streaking above my head. This was closely followed by several FW-190s, and coming in the other direction were several ME-109s. I threw myself down onto the grass at the side of the runway. But the Allies weren't as hungover as the Germans expected them to be. Many of the bases had already launched morning missions, and some of them had returned by the time the Germans arrived. Flight Lieutenant R.C. Smith had aborted his dawn flight that morning because of fuel issues. He arrived at his Eindhoven base when he noticed a German Jagdgeschwader III arrive with several other aircraft. Smith plunged to the attack, where he shot down a Messerschmitt and attacked nine others before running out of ammunition. Another flight lieutenant, Peter Wilson, was on his first mission as leader of the 438th Squadron when he was attacked by the Germans. His wingman, Officer Ross Keller, had barely gotten off the ground when Nazis shot him down. The Jagdgeschwader III unit destroyed almost 30 Allied planes that morning, damaged another 30, and lost 30 of their own. If the mission had gone as well for the German fighters as it did for the Jagdgeschwader III, Bodenplatte would have been a victory. In contrast to the New Year's festivities on the Allied side, any celebration, and especially any alcohol consumption, was prohibited for the Luftwaffe. The night before the attack, the young German pilots went to bed early. Ground crews even worked all night to prepare for the attack. German pilot Sergeant Werner Molga, who was only 19 when Operation Baseplate occurred, recalled arriving at his base on that day, quote, When we turned in at the field, a fantastic sight spread out in front of our eyes. The aircraft of all the Strafeln had been taxied from their dispersals by the ground crews and were lined up at the field as if for parade inspection. 50 FW-190D9s in the last light of the moon. At the Melsbrook airfield northeast of Brussels, 35 British Royal Air Force planes were destroyed. A further nine were severely damaged. Many of the battles in Operation Baseplate had similar results, hurting the Allies, but devastating the already weak Luftwaffe. Corporal Jeffrey Cook, a radar technician in charge of the lighthouse at Belsharon Island, remembered being caught off guard by, quote, hordes of German planes flying towards the Belgian coast. They passed on both sides, and many were nearer to the ground than my perch. I shall always remember that grandstand view of the last major effort of the Luftwaffe. The degree of secrecy prioritized on the development and implementation of Operation Baseplate ultimately hampered its success. In preparation for the mission, some of the younger pilots were given maps without their bases or flight pads on them, in case they fell into Allied hands. Most pilots weren't even notified that many of their own anti-air batteries would be active and under them on January 1st. Many assumed they were on a mass reconnaissance mission by the time they followed their commanders into battle. This blend of circumstances ultimately led to the most significant blow to Operation Baseplate. During the battle, many air units suffered friendly fire casualties from the anti-aircraft artillery. The German ground and naval forces could not believe that the Luftwaffe was mounting an effort of this scale. Some batteries, such as the ones guarding V-2 missile launch sites around The Hague, fired upon their own aircraft. German squadrons 27 and 54 began Operation Base Plate with 43 planes. Seven of them were lost to friendly fire before ever reaching the target. By the end of the battle, they had lost almost half their aircraft, and 17 pilots were killed or captured. It's estimated that up to 25% of the Luftwaffe's losses on January 1st, 1945 were from friendly fire. Sergeant Eric Heider, flying a Pathfinder in the Luftwaffe, was forced to take evasive action near the Eisel River. He described, quote, This was German, our own flak. Only shots of anger were our answer. What a mess. 
and this following several weeks of preparation. The operational plan was no good. Operation Baseplate was far from a long-term success. The German pilots' experience, or lack thereof, was evident. The Allies were able to quickly mount their defenses and began fighting the enemy in the air. American pilots flying P-51 Mustangs showed off that day in the airfields and downed dozens upon dozens of German aircraft. The post-battle analysis concluded that only one-third of the Luftwaffe's 34 air combat groups made attacks on time and with a surprise element. The operation failed to achieve the desired air superiority the Luftwaffe aimed for. In fact, Operation Baseplate was the last significant assault the Luftwaffe was capable of. World War II ended four months later. The Allies suffered very minor losses. Since they were well supplied in the rest of Europe, they quickly replaced almost all of their lost aircraft. Overall, it's estimated that Operation Bodenplatte destroyed 305 Allied aircraft and damaged another 190. Still, many believe the number to be much higher. The Luftwaffe, on the other hand, lost about 280 aircraft and had over 140 pilot casualties. Almost 100 of them were captured by the Allies. Most of the losses consisted of new pilots. Still, some of the casualties included experienced officers and veteran flyers. This left Germany's defense with crippled resources, lots of inexperienced pilots, weaker than ever, and incapable of mounting any major attack again. Germany's skies were quickly lost as the Western and Eastern fronts collapsed into Berlin. The Luftwaffe lost another 200 pilots during the last six weeks of the war, 